So figure 9 leaves us at this bright yellow box, LTM, for long-term memory. And we need to be clear about what these things mean. So long-term memory in this paper means in rats, fear conditioning, to be able to associate a training chamber with something to fear. Uh, to learn that, you have to read over the experimental procedures section or the methods, which tells us what the authors mean when they say something. For instance, for animals, they mean adult, male, rats, a certain weight. They're housed under 12 hour by 12 hour light dark cycles with as much food and water to have as they like. And all the experimental procedures were approved by the governing body at their university. Um, all this is standard that you'd expect. And uh, they're handled three to five days prior the start of behavioral conditioning. So the behavioral procedures are worth focusing on a little bit, I feel. So for contextual fewer conditioning, the animals are placed into a training chamber. They're allowed to explore for two minutes, and after that they receive a series of shocks. So this is something to fear. So the rat would, if left to their own devices, learn to associate being placed in the training chamber with something to fear, which is the electric shock. This happens over two minutes, one second shocks, a total of three shocks. After the final shock, animals remained in the training chamber for an additional minute. So freezing response is a behavior that rats display when they have something to fear. So they will lock up, they won't move, and that's a, a freezing behavior. Now there are a number of controls to be done in this experiment to determine for sure that uh, there aren't artifacts in play. For instance, the rat wouldn't just be responding to the training chamber itself, or the rat wouldn't be responding to being handled. Uh, so there are a number of controls that the scientists are trying to capture. One of these controls is a context only control. The animals, the rats, are exposed to the fear conditioning context, which is a training chamber, but they never actually receive any shocks. So there's for these animals, there's no reason for them to learn to fear the training chamber because they're never shocked. Another uh, control is animals are <clears throat> shocked while being handled. And that's it, there's no training chamber here. And the control shocks here occur quickly enough that the animals don't actually form an association with the context of being handled. Additionally, there are these intra-CA1 infusions. So this is the administration of a drug injected in, uh, directly into a subfield, the CA1 subfield of the hippocampus. And these drugs are DNA methyltransferase inhibitors, either ZEB or 5AZ8. And that's performed immediately post-training to uh, presumably interfere with memory formation, if indeed the DNA methyltransferases are important for memory formation. So if, if you would have a hypothesis that a DNA methyltransferase has to be active to form memories, well, if you inject a drug that suppresses basically the activity of DNA methyltransferase, then you might not expect memories to form at all. So this allows the experimental interrogation of the role of a DNA methyltransferase in the formation of memory. There are other details here about uh, the real-time polymerase chain reaction, and PCR that's performed, uh, some of the surgeries that are performed, details about the drugs, details about the infusion, the insulation of the CA1 subfield, uh, as well as the DNA methylation assay to detect what genes are methylated and which aren't, and some details about the statistical analysis. But it's important to understand, of course, the details of the experiment, and that's why we've read in detail the methods section of the experimental procedures.